Hey gang, hope you're having an awesome day, Financial Algebra All-Stars. We're here in 3-4 talking about compound interest, what we like to call money, making money. This is going to be kind of building off of what we saw before with simple interest, which seemed as if it was just kind of a one-time deal. But we'll soon see compound interest does a lot for us, and we'll actually be using a new equation to make that happen. So let's just start off. If we had a principal, so amount of money in our account, that was $100 and we were investing at 3% APR, which is annual percentage rate per year, you know, with simple interest, we would just use that just interest as principal rate times time to get that done. So how could we express the rate for this situation? Quick refresher. Well, we would want to take it to a decimal, which I think makes sense because usually when we think percentages, it's like nice to talk about them, but when we're actually computing something, we're going to need a decimal. So our principal is 100, our rate's 0 0.03, and this just happens for one month, so we would only be using one month of the year, so we use 1 over 12. But let's say that we wanted to keep that pattern going, like that interest would only give us a quarter, which isn't a ton. So our new balance is $100.25, but I don't know about you, but I want more money. I wanna keep my money making money. So how could that be taken further? Well, with compound interest, this is just gonna keep reoccurring over and over with interest. We keep getting paid out pretty regularly. And this happens a lot if we're lucky and get a good rate or have a good bank. So let's say that with Another thing thrown in with compound, this happens more and more. So now we would take our principal of 100.25 and take it just another increment, just another month, getting a new balance of $100 and approximately 50 cents or so. All right. And this would just keep going and going, which is nice, but there's a cleaner way that we can do this because if we just keep doing this per month, per month, per month, I don't know about you, but it gets kind of tiresome. So we know that our new balance can be achieved if we take the principal and just add the interest that we accrued based over that year. So we can then take that idea further because you know interest is still principal rate times time. The principal is still our starting amount and our new balance is just adding those two. And so we're able to use this equation to help build that together. So you might notice that these both have increments of principal. So if you want to get into the math of this, it's as if we're factoring out our principal. We're saying it's one plus the rate times time, where t is in years. And how can we take that further? Well, 1 over n was another way to talk about time, and we use that up here to talk about just one month increment. And we can then take this fraction of the rate divided with n, where n is the number of compounds per year, and we see that n is also seen again out here. So we're really just rearranging this equation based off of what's been done before, but now it's bringing into the effect of the balance from the previous amount and how much the interest is being brought in and how many times that's happening. Does that make sense? This new equation right here in green's real pivotal. All right, so let's see how this is gonna be taken further. So now let's say that we had a principal of 100. And again, we're trying to retain our initial balance. So that's why this one is right here. And if we have that rate of 0.03, Again, from what we saw before, we know that's over the span of 12 times in the year because this is monthly. Um, we can then simplify this a little bit here because we're saying that we want 12 compounds in the year, and this is going to happen two months out of the year because we're seeing this happen twice. Well, I don't know. If we were to compute all of this, how do you think that would, what do you think this is going to end up as? Is this going to be any different than what we saw before in the example? Hopefully you're saying no. It's going to get you the same amount. But hopefully we can agree it's a lot cleaner because before this would have taken two opportunities, two things of equations. But now we can just plug in our rate, our principal, the number of compounds per year here and here. 
then also the number of years. So that can be a little tricky when we're dealing with fractions of a year, but think about how we expressed this right here. We said that one over N was our time, N is the number of compounds per year. Um, so that's one way to think about what's going on. So I don't know about you, but compound interest seems a little bit cleaner. It's just one equation we have to use versus simple interest, which just happens once, and then we have to do it again and again and again. Compound interest saves us some time. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.